so too do the protests. Demonstrations are almost every day. Stop the Oxford Animal Although the shouting is supposed to intimidate the builders, after five weeks they seem to be getting used to it. Far from being scared, some seem to be laughing behind their balaclavas. A massive police presence means that Merle is not sure to hassle himself. As long as I need every right to be here and return to the junction. Operation Balance is costing millions of pounds and has the full backing of the government. They're determined that neither Mel's campaign nor illegal activity will stop the lab this time. But what I want to see is what Mel and his campaigners are so keen to prevent. And at last, after months of refusals, the university grants me access to one of the departments due to move into the new building. Tipu Aziz's monkey lab. It's the first time in 20 years that a camera crew has been allowed into this most controversial of facilities. Behind a series of locked doors is the Oxford Primate Lab. It's home to the monkeys that Tipu is experimenting on. This is Felix. He has spent the last six months being prepared for his role as a research monkey. Can you tell me what uh, you're hoping to do today? Well, really to catch up with how much we've progressed in training this monkey. Um, being totally untrained, we've got him to agree to sit in a chair um, on demand. And uh, today we'll see how far we can get him to do a simple touch test. At first glimpse, what I'm seeing is no different to the images that Mel showed me. What Tipu calls a chair looks to me like a tiny, rather barbaric cage. We've been training Felix here to get into the chair on his own, um, which you saw he does very happily now. That's the cage? Yeah. And now we're in the process of training him to touch the screen on cue um, where he saw this image moving across and we want him to uh, touch it, to make this decision to touch it, to make it change position. It's a bit like training a domestic dog to follow commands. Felix is being induced to do the task in reward for treats. The lessons will continue every day for months until Felix has learnt the skill. Only then will the experiment begin. And, um, and once you've trained him, what happens? Well, once we've trained him, we'll um, implant some electrodes uh, deep into the area that we're interested in and uh, study the activity of that nucleus in relationship to um, making movements. And um, at a later stage, we'll make him Parkinsonian and repeat the same, um, just to understand how this nucleus behaves in health and disease. And um, won't it hurt the monkey? No, not at all. Um, pain is not a part of any of the experiments we do. And how's that possible? Well, as you saw, the, this is uh, basically what will constitute uh, most of the experiments we'll be doing over the next uh, years or more with um, Felix. Um, surgeries are always done under full anesthetic, um, so it's not really subjected to any pain. Um, so I would say no, pain um, is not part of the process. But I'm not as hardened as Tipu. And imagining what's going to happen to Felix during the next year makes me question whether experiments like this can ever be justified. January the 14th, 2006. Speak campaign's National Day of Action. 
Mal has called together animal rights campaigners from across the country. 400 have descended on Oxford Town Centre in order to march on the lab. It seems like there are almost as many police, and the apparent failure to stop the work for a second time is forcing Mel to up the ante. These people, these people have got to understand something, right? They've got to understand something. Every brick, every pane of glass, every bolt, nut, screw, piece of wire that goes in there will be contested or brought over. They must not ever, ever be allowed to rest. If it takes a war of attrition, that's what it takes. If it takes running battles on the street of, streets of Oxford, then that's what it takes. But whatever it takes, we have to do it. If that means some of us being arrested, if that means some of us taking that step, then so be it. If there are any police officers out there who consider I'm inciting people, then let me tell you clearly, I intend to do exactly that. I intend to incite people. Because the time has come for fighting, not talking. And if that means inciting people, I'm going to do exactly that. The march sets off towards the lab. In the light of Mel's speech, the police, wary of violence, are rerouting the protesters, preventing them from reaching the building at all. Mel knows nothing of the police's intention until he comes within eyesight of the building. In a bid to get to the lab, the march ends in chaos. Mel Broughton is arrested. Tipu Aziz is about to perform an operation. His patient is Sean Gardner. never promise anything in life but the chances are we should be able to improve his quality of life glad it's here and, and it's happening there and I'm very happy before the operation can begin Sean's head needs to be fitted into a rigid metal frame it's not a new principle first elucidated in 1907 by a surgeon scientist in University College London called Victor Horsley who made the first frame to really map out uh, the function of targets in monkeys. With his head secured, the surgeons will drill through his skull and guide electrodes to the precise parts of his brain which have been misfiring. What do you think the range of outcomes for Shauna? What I would like to see is that he can adopt a more normal posture and by adopting a more normal posture, he would be able to talk again. He would be able, hopefully, to participate in activities that are absolutely critical, like a normal education, and perhaps go out again and be a kid. The procedure will be the same one I saw performed earlier on a rat. In some ways, this looks like the posters that animal rights activists hold up, but with a boy and not a monkey. And even though it's been done for Sean's benefit, it's still quite disturbing.
have passed uh, a deep brain electrode into a target deep in the brain called the medial pallidum, which lies just about above the optic nerve. So it's fairly deep in the brain. And once we've got them in place, um, we can activate them when he's awake and comfortable and slowly increase the current until his spasms of his body calm down. And so if you hadn't done any research on it, you couldn't have done this kind of operation? Not really. Um, although in the old days, what people did was actually actually just chop bits of the brain away in man uh, in the hope that it would do something beneficial. The concept was that inducing a degree of paralysis was better than the disease state itself. Whereas now, a lot of this surgery is driven by an understanding of the brain. And that comes from monkeys. Monkeys, and also a lot of stuff that doesn't need monkeys. Um, rodents, mice, rats, what have you. Just a month after Laurie Pycroft had his poster ripped, his counter movement is growing. A group of Oxford students have taken up his cause. They see the need for the university to build the lab. And they're planning to take to the streets with a demonstration of their own. Um, from a personal point of view, I'm willing to put myself forward as the, as the face of protest. Um, my full name's already in the public domain and the, all the psychos seem to know. But I don't want to be the only one at the front, no. partially because I don't want to be criticised. I've already started criticised. Yeah. I don't want to be criticised of um, just wanting my 15 minutes of faith. The students have already been talking to the university and the police. <coughs> as, you, as you all know, there's the injunction. Uh, and the university marshal gave me his assurances that he had instructed the uh, lawyers not to prosecute us if we broke the terms of the injunction because the injunction's there for speaking at LF. Can I suggest that we don't? Um, I think given that there is potentially stuff in, you know, public and the media and all the rest of it between us and the ALF, and given how upset they get when they're not allowed near to the lab, I suggest we play by absolutely the same rules as them. The march is planned for three weeks' time. But will anyone turn up? It's the middle of February. An animal liberation website called Biteback publishes a series of so-called communiques boasting of direct action attacks. One of them announces that this is just the beginning of a campaign of devastation against anyone linked in any way to Oxford University and that the ALF promises to do whatever it takes and that anything goes. When I witness the results of the attacks, they're not the overblown terrorism that the ALF wants us to believe they're capable of. Architects who'd worked on other university projects entirely unconnected to the lab had their premises vandalised and the tyres on their car let down. And in an isolated wood, the base of a Vodafone mast has been targeted. The vandals also broke the cooling fans but I can't imagine that it's going to have a devastating effect right in the middle of winter. Vodafone say they don't even know why they've been targeted, as they only fund research into phone technology at the university. Mel has a new target, the crane company he was searching for. No one from the crane company comes out to talk, but the demonstration has provoked some interest. Uh, there's an awful lot of police officers turning up at the moment. An awful lot. I've recognised them as well. 
Yeah, it's from the site. How do you think they know who you know? They have their ways, don't they? Spying, listening, tracking device on the car, probably. No, it's probably something stuck on my car, then, to be honest. Yeah, looked at. It could be that the significant police presence is because the industrial estate also houses a police training centre. I just want to sort of ask you what you're doing here in terms of a protest, what your, what your intentions are really. Obviously, you know, we're here to uh, ask questions of a certain company which we believe have a direct involvement. Um, is this the extent of the numbers that you're looking to have here today? Uh, I'm really so, yeah. And uh, how long are you planning to sort of protest for today? I don't know, until you get bored. <laughs> OK. Seeing Mel rendered powerless by the police in the injunction, I can't help but wonder if he's tempted to step back onto the wrong side of the law. There's no doubt, there is absolutely no doubt that, that historically direct action has had an impact. This is unarguable, you know, it's absolutely unarguable. It has had an impact. And would you like to be doing direct action? Yeah, I keep getting asked this all the time. I mean, I feel the same way about direct action as I did when I was involved. Um, practically, I can't be involved. I'm a part of a legal campaign. I'm too well known. I, I would be a risk to anyone, and, and that's practically it, you know, I, I can't get involved for practical reasons. If you're asking me what is my ethical viewpoint on direct action, it hasn't changed. It's the same as it was 20 years ago. After four hours, everyone goes home. It's the 19th of February. There's less than a week to go before Laurie's demonstration. Would you like to support animal research? In defence of animal research. Join your next Saturday. Defend animal research. Support the building of the Oxford Lab. For the first time in a hundred years, the anti-vivisectionists are being met by a campaign from the other side. Would you like to support animal research, Thank you very much. We're in favour of the Oxford Animal Lab. You're in favour of it? Yeah. Excellent. A lot of people sort of walk past and they... Just that, did you say support? Yeah, it's, it's quite a shock to some people because you always get uh, the anti, 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 you know, don't torture animals. I'd like to support animal research officers. If they really believe that this lab is essential, if they really, really believe that animal research is that important, they should have been here two years ago when we started. They should have been dogging us every step of the way. I'd have had some respect for them then. I really would have done. I'd have treated them with the respect they probably deserve. But I'm not going to give any respect to an organisation that's quite clearly come along as, a, as an opportunist moment. And it's basically... I don't even think half of them know why they're here. I don't think they understand what this issue is about at all. I'd like to support animal research. We're in favour of it. Mel Broughton and Laurie Pycroft have never met, but a student magazine has persuaded them to share a stage together for the first time. Mel is determined to remind everybody that Speak is a legal campaign. It's way too easy for these people to just call us extremists and get away with it. And, um, you know, I think it's about time that they saw that, in fact, you know, we've been engaged in a debate for, uh, as a part of this campaign for almost two and a half years now. I and, uh, yeah. But uh, I don't know, we'll see, you know. Um, hopefully it'll be fairly lively. <laughs> Laurie has invited Tipu along. in a debate such as this, do you feel you'll get a chance to wear your views and you'll get a fair hearing, especially from speech and such like? Well, one would never get a fair hearing from them. And Laurie's also accompanied by his own student spin doctor. The second one I'd ask is um, if, his, uh, if his daughter was dying of leukemia and if the only way to save her was to experiment with animal testing, would he be in favour then? Because, I mean, then he, he can't deny it. Really. Well, the point is he can say no, but then he just looks yeah. like a total fit. Before a word has been spoken, Mel has already managed to antagonise some of the audience. I support, I support test, uh, medical testing for scientific reasons, but I'm anti the protesters because they're such a nuisance. I uh, have no mind. I was kind of on the animal rights side, but then got a bit bored of them abusing me as I went in and out of my college. So uh, I'm ready to be persuaded. <laughs> OK, um, we're going to start now. And I invite Mr Pycroft to put forward his views. 
on why he is pro animal testing. Thank you. Um, Thank you very much. For students who've experienced Mel's tactics for the last six months, the rights of animals seem less important than the questions about his own behaviour. I'd like to take a question from a member of the audience. Um, right, there's one over there. Will the panel take this opportunity to publicly condemn all violence which has been exacted in the name of, of anti-animal testing marches, protests, whatever? I'd like to say to me, I'm getting a bit tired of this uh, animal extremist thing all the time. What I would like to hear is an apology from Oxford University and those involved in this for the violence committed to the animals inside the laboratories. Now, until that time that we get an apology for that, then I'm not going to apologise for anything else. Um, Hello. Uh, Mel Broughton just said that he doesn't want to apologise for anything. I'd like to ask him, doesn't he think it's slightly odd that for an activist who claims ethics to be on his side that he <coughs> engages in such a sort of unethical discourse saying that every student is a potential target if they'd like to tear well, down well, a building well, hang on Where am I on the record of saying that? What you are doing is misquoting all the time, putting words into my mouth that I never said. Like this continual... Yeah, sorry, you're on the record saying it to me. I was doing research for a story and Mr. Broughton, you did say, although you said it would be remaining within the law. Exactly, exactly. What, what you, my friend is referring to, I think, is the quote that was issued by the Animal Liberation Front, not by me. No, it was by you. I was talking to no, you. No, but I'm word. saying, that, 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 as I said, it's a part of a legal campaign, not threatening people or attacking people. You said that the students of Oxford University needed to be very careful because they were all legitimate targets. But there's a target of a campaign that's been running for two and a half years. It's been perfectly legal and legitimate. Mr. The speaker's not descended into violence then, at all. Mr. Mr. Broughton, if you're completely against violence and you believe in uh, legitimate behaviour, why have you spent three years in prison for control? conspiracy to commit arson? Um, because as a part of a... Yeah, no, I think I need to address it. That's a, I mean, I'm perfectly happy to talk about that. As I, I will quite rightly say to everyone here, quite openly, in my, in my 30 years as an animal rights campaigner, I have taken part as a member of the Animal Liberation Movement. I've served a prison sentence. I am now involved in a legal campaign. If you're asking me to stand here in front of you and apologise for being involved in that, then I'm not going to do it. You've heard all the evidence, ladies and gentlemen, and I just want to ask for um, a show of hands. Who, after hearing all of that, is anti-animal testing? Right. Um, quite a few people. Quite a few people um, all over the place. And who, after that, is pro-animal testing? Right. Has anyone actually changed their mind this evening? Has anyone actually changed their mind? Okay. Good. There's, there's one there. Okay, so thank you very much for coming, and we hope that you enjoyed it. Thank you. What should have been a debate about the rights and wrongs of animal experimentation descended into an argument about the methods of Mel's protest. You managed to persuade one person. Did I? The one person who put their hand up was... Um, well, she was scared of me, I <laughs> Although some of the arguments about animal experimentation might make sense, the student debate left me wondering if Mel is turning away many potential supporters because of his aggression. Why, don't you, why, don't, why haven't you spent your time uh, lobbying MPs and uh, you know, going through the more... I well, have. I've done all of that. You know, I've lobbied MPs, I've stood outside MPs' offices, I've written to MPs. Um, I, lost count the number of times that cases have been taken to court to try and get a prosecution for animal suffering and they fail every time because at the end of the day you know and you have to be absolutely honest about that about this courts don't recognize they still don't recognize um, the rights of animals they still will not uh, in most cases in vast majority of cases will not prosecute people for abusing animals they just won't because we still live in a situation where at the end of the day animals are still viewed as a commodity and in those situations, you are going to have militant animal rights campaigns. When, when I hear the word extremism used against animal rights cam campaigns, my immediate feeling is, is yes, it's an extreme reaction to an extreme problem, to an extreme situation. That's exactly what it is. It isn't born out of nothing. It's not difficult to understand where Mel is coming from. The monkeys and rats that I've seen whilst making this film have disturbed me. I wouldn't describe their treatment as torture, but knowing the experiments they'll have to endure, it's hard to remain unaffected by their predicament. But it 
also difficult not to be touched by the patients. It's six weeks since Sean Gardner had his operation. Can you tell me what you're expecting about from Sean? Uh, well, just any improvement. Not, not really sure. So we'll go and see him now. Hey, Sean. Hi. Hi, hi, hi. Already there are small changes in Sean's posture. He can hold up his head. His face is better, isn't it? Yep. Yep. Face is better. He's sitting up there. You got more control? Reach for this? This arm's straightened out. Hip is bent round here. Yeah. And it's straightened out. Really a lot well, I think for six weeks since surgery, he's done brilliantly well. I mean, his right wrist uh, deformity is straightened. His face is much straighter. He's speaking much more clearly, and he can sit up now. How are you, Sean? Uh, okay. He can roll over, get on his stomach. He can... Um, Get on, uh, sit up straight, uh, hold his hands out, um, and sit up uh, with his legs crossed. Uh, he plays, um, feeds himself, um, he's holding his head up straight, just loads of stuff. And are you giving your mother a bit much harder time now? Mm, I don't know. <laughs> You're not being naughty at all with your newfound power. Mm. It's February the 25th, 2006. For the first time in living memory, a public campaign has organised a demonstration in favour of animal experimentation. The media turned up from across the world. I've come here today to express my thanks to these young people who have stood up, many of them aren't even scientists, to press the need for free expression in England. Where do you study uh, at university if you, uh, when you do want to go to med school? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure which university I want to go to, but Oxford's a little great. But so far, there seem to be more journalists than demonstrators. Lab coat is wise, mate. I really don't. Okay. I'm, the, the, the thing about this, right? You, you're not a scientist, right? No, neither am I. We're making arguments. We, it's not about identity here. It's about arguments, right? So we don't want to wear white lab coats on camera. You look ridiculous. Right? <laughs> Come on, think about it. All right, right. All right, fair enough. Protest is still a young organisation. There's been no opportunity to practice their brand new chants and slogans. What do we want, animals? When do we want it? Mel 2 has organised a demonstration today. His foot soldiers are amassing by the lab itself. Everyone's going now to the labs, getting there as quick as they can. No more fear. Animal testing's wanted here. No more threats. No more fear. Animal testing's wanted here. No more threats. No more fear. Animal testing's wanted here. What do we want? It? No! As the march sets off, it's easy to forget six weeks ago, protests didn't exist. But Laurie's campaign has clearly managed to capture the mood of many. Outside the laboratory, there's a more familiar chant. The Speak campaign has mustered 200 people determined to show their strength in the face of their first public opposition in 100 years. The opposing marches passed just 100 metres from each other on either side of the lab. My doubts that enough people would turn up to demonstrate in the name of such a controversial issue seem unfounded. The police estimate that more than 700 people have joined the march. People are now demanding 
their democracy, their rights back, their freedom of speech. That's been something that's been evading this debate for years. I want other scientists now to feel that they can stand up and be counted and be proud of the work they do. After years of violence and threats at the hands of extremists, many animal researchers see this march as heralding a new era. Well, it's a great day. Let's just hope it's um, the beginning of the end. Everyone here would certainly like to see the end of terrorism. And uh, it's great to see some grass grassroots this willingness, hundreds and hundreds of people, uh, to, um, to stand up for freedom of speech, of course, their own freedom of speech, um, but to, to try and remove uh, terror and fear and threats and violence uh, from, from the discussion. As the protest march heads for its ultimate destination, back outside the lab, Mel Broughton is putting his own spin on the day's events. You're not making history. You not come down here today and done something truly incredible. You stood up to these people. And I've got a message. I've got a message for Mr. Tip who is eased. The monkey abuser said that we're just a bunch of extremists. It would seem that anyone who opposes these animal abusers is an extremist in their eyes. Well, Mr. Aziz, today you had a lesson from a movement that really knows how to fight. And that's our movement, the animal rights movement. Hey, thank you all for coming. What are we seeing here today? We're seeing a return of reason. We are seeing people stand up for themselves, letting scientists have the freedom to defend what they do again, to defend, to defend our rights. And I thank you all for making such a large protest peaceful. And I think this is the end of the animal rights terrorist activities in the UK. Thank you all. Thank you all for coming. Over the next few weeks, things in Oxford take on an unfamiliar calm. It's five months now since the work has returned to site and they don't seem to have paused once. Stone panels have been fixed to the facade. Through the plastic sheeting, you can see air conditioning ducts already in place. And bricks are filling in the spaces between the concrete frame. The police and Oxford security seem to have found new confidence as they might at last have the upper hand. It's still impossible to gain access to the inside of the site and it's increasingly difficult to film from the outside without interruption. There's a system set up in place, so obviously we, we stick to our... Yeah, OK. So that's, that's basically it. Yeah. So we can't record the sound of drills and hammers? No, what you're actually doing is for a microphone up to uh, over the fence, so they're actually listening on people. That's how we're seeing it. OK. All right. All right. Thank you. All right, cheers for your cooperation. The march has launched Laurie Pycroft into the public consciousness. Does anyone know what the difference between a job centre and a job centre plus is? Now whenever I turn up, he's being followed by another journalist or film crew. And his protest campaign is never short of a stunt to create more publicity, even if some of them are rather crass. Well, today we're going to be delivering a large packages of donuts and other goodies to the builders of the Oxford Lab um, as a big thank you for all their hard work and putting up with so much crap. Profiles of Laurie have been in most of the national newspapers. He's appeared on Richard and Judy and he's even been styled as a heartthrob in a teen magazine. The last time Mel was campaigning in Oxford, he was showing his usual level of commitment. Get your hand off 
now. Relax. Get your hands off me now. Relax. Get off. Calm down. I you suggest you get out of my face. Calm down. Get off. 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 Once again, he managed to get himself arrested. As a result of this, he's going to find it harder to protest, as he's been banned from Oxford for at least seven months. As the lab nears completion, and with Mel banned from Oxford, I ask him if the university has beaten him. Well, are they succeeding in shutting you down? That succeeding in, in making legal protests very, very difficult, they are, but I, I take a lot of heart from that, actually, I think it proves we've been successful. How have you been successful? Well, let's look at it like this for a start. Two and a half years ago, they started to build that lab. There should have been experimental animals in there right now, and they're not. That lab was supposed to cost £18 million. They've now, we know, got £100 million from the government to try and finish it. We've already been hugely successful, and we will make sure, and let's make no mistake about this, whatever happens here, they'll never build another lab, never. We'll make sure they haven't got enough money to build it or the will to build it, because we will break them. 32 years after writing the book that some say started the modern animal rights movement, Peter Singer is back in Oxford. A group of pro-animal experimenters are hoping to cross swords with the godfather of animal liberation. What, uh, personally, do you think of protest? Do I think of protesting? Protest, like the organisation oh, that... Yeah. I'm sorry, I, I don't really know enough about what you've been doing, what you stand for. Um, so I can't really comment on, on that question. Yes, I mean, uh, I'm a surgeon and also a scientist, and uh, part of my work has been to induce Parkinsonism in primates. As a result of uh, research in that, I was one of a group internationally that showed that an area in the brain that was never associated with Parkinsonism, the subthalamic nucleus, is overactive. And by operating on it, reducing its activity, one can significantly, very significantly, improve Parkinson's. And to date, 40,000 people have been made better with the, that surgery. And worldwide at the time, uh, I guess only 100 monkeys were used in the uh, few laboratories. Well, I think, I mean, if you, if you put a case like that, clearly I would have to agree that that is a justifiable experiment. I mean, I think you should reproach yourself for doing it, provided, as you know, and I take, you, you're the expert in this, not me, that there was no other way of discovering this knowledge. And um, I, could, I could see that as justifiable uh, research, yes. It's unexpected and a real shock that Peter Singer should give such a ringing endorsement to Tipu Aziz. There's no doubt that the debate on animal experimentation will continue for many years to come. But now that those in favour seem more willing to voice their opinion, at least both sides will have a chance to be heard. How much can you do for yourself compared to before? A lot. A lot. But I've made up my own mind. Yeah. Although in my heart I'm queasy about seeing what we do to animals in the name of science, in my head I think that the research I've seen is justified. And the clincher is watching young Sean rise to his feet and stand for the first time in almost three years. Can you straighten your legs completely? Can you straight Yes, yeah, so he can do it. Yeah. Six months ago, he could not even twitch his fingers, and now he's on his way to regaining his independence. But Professor Aziz does lots of work on animals. Yeah, 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 fine. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so do you agree with it? No? Mm -hmm. yeah. In the end, I've learned that Tipu Aziz is working with his monkeys for the good of the patients. In the new building, they'll have better conditions. And that's why I think that the opening of the Oxford Animal Lab in the middle of next year will be a good thing. <laughs>